All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a very special employer version of Tech Connect Thursday, powered by WeTech Alliance in partnership with Invest Windsor Essex, FedDev Ontario, St. Clair College, University of Windsor, Workforce Windsor Essex, and today, Communitech. Now, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Adam Castle from WeTech Alliance. I serve as our Director of Venture Services, and I'll be responsible for hosting today's session. Now, Deloitte's 2023 Global Human Capital Trend Survey pulled 10,000 businesses and HR leaders across every industry with 104 countries participating. And what they found was that all of the rules of talent acquisition and retention have changed in a post-COVID world. And while this has come with many new challenges, it's also presented really great new opportunities to leverage talent from a global pool in a shift towards what they call a boundaryless world. Now, work no longer is defined by jobs. The workplace is no longer a specific place, and many workers aren't traditional employees. Companies daring to experiment with new work models are redefining how we think about our organizations. And programs like Communitech Outposts that you're going to learn about here today help organizations hire based on the person and on the skills, not on the location. You'll hear today how this program removes or reduces risk, work, and costs associated with hiring talent globally without the need to create new corporate entities or foreign back offices. So what did the report uncover from Deloitte? And what are some of the things that you may want to consider as you listen to today's presentation? Well, the first is that the definition of jobs is changing to focus more on specific skills. Instead of viewing workers based on their job titles, workers should be viewed more as unique individuals with a portfolio of skills to offer and should be matched to work that aligns with those skills. Well, since people are happiest with most and most productive when they're doing work that fits with who they are and what they care about, this model really helps workers to feel more fulfilled and it helps employers to look at hiring differently. Gone are the days we're not hiring someone based on degrees and certifications. Instead, we're actually starting to focus on individual skills and capabilities. This allows for employers to become more equitable in their hiring practices and exposes them to workforce opportunities they may have never even considered before. Now, creating the ideal workplace no ma no actually no matter um, creating the ideal workplace actually no longer means curating a physical space for individuals. And so the idea here is that physical digital hybrid environments are becoming more and more normalized and are much less complicated than they sound. For example, Unilever has released a set of global principles on how to make the best use of office space with a focus on flexibility and collaboration using widely available technology. Advent Health, on the other hand, has added virtual nurses to its care teams to work alongside in-person medical personnel, which allows for the offload of work from primary care and faster and more efficient patient interactions. These experiments all started with the simple question that every business could and should apply to themselves through innovative workspace design, regardless of where our employees are located. How can we create an environment that keeps talent connected, happy and engaged, and most importantly, feeling balanced? With these key points in mind, I invite you now to explore Communitech Outpost programs and hear how it's able to help your business conquer workforce challenges and present a new way to help your business tap into the talent it needs by going wherever it needs to go to find it. Want to join in the discussion? Feel free to please use the chat feature located at the bottom of the video window to engage with session attendees. Have a question for our guests? You may submit questions at any time throughout the session using the Q&A box located in the bottom of the display window. You can also upvote the questions you want answered. Should you experience any technical difficulties, please send a message in the chat box. We've got John Mark Bashan, our manager or director of marketing and communications on standby right here, ready to answer those questions for you. Now to get us started, I'm so excited to introduce Karen Klink, Director, Channel Partners and Founder Success for the Communitech Outpost Program. Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Adam. It's great to be here. And thanks uh, for everyone to join today's session. Um, as Adam mentioned, he gave a great um, overview of just mm -hmm. talent and how certainly it's changed um, over the last number of years, especially with COVID and that the onset of remote work and the ability to be really be able to hire anywhere um, in the world. So it creates this idea of borderless recruiting. Uh, so as Adam mentioned, I'm here today to, to talk a little bit about the Communitech Outpost program. So I'm just gonna share my screen and go into slideshow mode here in a minute. <laughs> All right. Adam, can you confirm that you can see my, my um, screen? Absolutely, looks great. Perfect. 
So to kind of kick things off, I'll just give everyone a quick overview of Communitech. Um, we're a tech hub just like WeTech. Uh, we're part of the Canadian Technology Network, which extends all across Canada from coast to coast. Communitech specifically focuses on Waterloo Region, so Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. And we've been around for just over 25 years. Um, and from day one, the mission has always been to help founders start, grow, and succeed. No matter what size company you are, whether you're a startup of one, being a founder, all the way to, you know, companies that have grown to hundreds and thousands of people, we do have something for everyone. Uh, to kind of, you know, give a little bit more of the history, um, we were built by founders for founders. So, our history is rooted in uh, a group of tech CEOs at the time, uh, back in 1997, that were getting together on a regular basis, talking about challenges and trying to scale and grow their own businesses outside of Canada. And, you know, they got a lot of value out of being a peer group. So they thought, you know, well, I'm sure there's a lot of other companies that have these same questions and challenges when they scale their businesses. So let's form an organization that really... Um, looks after the tech company and has the tech company's best interest in mind and also rallies um, enough resources and tools around making, you know, Waterloo Region and Canada uh, a lot more attractive for tech companies to not just start their company in Canada and Waterloo Region specifically, but to keep them here and to grow and scale them. Um, back in 97, of course, there was this huge attraction to the Valley. So it was really centered around how do we retain the companies as well as the talent that they bring um, to Canada and to the region. So we're an innovation hub uh, based in Kitchener. Um, I encourage, you know, anyone who from Windsor who's in the area, if you're interested in a visit, certainly happy to, to provide you with a tour. Now on to the Outpost program. So this was a program that Communitech launched about three years ago, and it's an employer of record service. Um, that's open to any business sector. So the exception with this particular program is that you do not have to be a tech company to take advantage of it. And we help founders really expand their global footprint by hiring talent without having to set up that legal entity in another country in order to be able to hire a person and manage their payroll and set them up with benefits. So we really take the hassle out of creating an employment contract that's very country specific and takes into account that specific country's labor and employment laws, and we uh, manage that risk for you. Uh, we also provide the HR support that goes along with that, in addition to payroll and compliance, as well as benefits. So the intent here is, you know, founders can hire quickly without having to worry about that back end, making sure that you're crossing all of your T's and dotting all of your I's in terms of meeting, um, you know, best practices from a, from a global hiring perspective and that we take care of all of that for you. A little on the history of the actual program. So Dave Caputo, who was a former chair of the Communitech board, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's started a number of businesses and has executed and um, and exited a number as well. So when he first started his uh, company, Pickstream, they needed to hire a salesperson in Brazil to really focus on building out their um business network in Brazil. And the first problem that they had to figure out was how do we pay this person and hire them in local currency and ensure that we're staying in line with all of Brazil's local labor and employment laws. So at the time they had an investor Newbridge network and they had an office in San Paulo. So what ended up happening is they used Newbridge Networks as the company that ended up hiring the salesperson for Pickstream. And Newbridge just invoiced Pickstream monthly uh, for the salary of that individual. And Newbridge Networks essentially acted as that employer of record, which is that legal entity in the country. Um, so they managed all of the payroll and ensured that all of the proper remittances were done and taxes were paid in accordance with local um, country law. So when Dave sold Pickstream and went on to his next business, he didn't have Newbridge Networks as an investor. So again, the challenge presented itself when he needed to hire somebody in a foreign country and didn't have a legal entity or an investor that had a legal entity to be able to hire through. So, you know, his 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 experience with um you know hiring folks in foreign countries and having to deal with the hassle of either setting up the legal entity or figuring out how to hire that person and pay them created a lot of 
uh, frustration and a lot of resources and time that was spent not on building the business, but on just figuring out this hiring issue. So he'd pitched to Communitech. Why doesn't Communitech run uh, an EOR or an employer of record service for companies across Canada to really help take that hassle away and reduce the risk and minimize the cost for companies? So that's exactly what we did. We formed Outpost about three years ago. Um, and we've hired in over 18 countries uh, to date and have hired over 250 folks in various countries around the world. When we went out to companies to, I would say, validate and test this idea before we actually launched it, uh, based on Dave's feedback, the big four challenges that we heard time and time again from companies was the ability to expand outside of Canada. Um, and access new markets, the ability to onboard employees very quickly and efficiently, um, managing those employees, ensuring that you're obviously compliant, and then paying them. How do you actually pay them in local currency? So Outpost really addresses these four big challenges, and I'm sure you know you've you're you experience these challenges as well when you're when you're expanding globally. So on the expansion piece, we can hire in more than 150 countries. We onboard within a matter of weeks instead of months. Um, we're able to manage the payroll and ensure that um, you're in accordance with all of the compliance and tax remittances are done properly and that you're um, you know, compliant with local government and labor law. So this is kind of, I would say a little bit repetitive of what I've just mentioned, but um, the employer of record really is a service so that you don't have to set up another entity. There will come a point as you scale and grow your business where it will make more financial sense for you to actually go through the process of setting up your own entity um, so that you can hire the employees directly. But oftentimes when you're hiring just a few folks in various countries around the world, the cost for a company to invest in actually setting up and resourcing and managing that legal entity is quite expensive um, in comparison to using an EOR solution. So when the time does come where it makes sense for your company to actually go down the path of setting it up yourself, um, again, we'll work directly with you to ensure that it's a smooth process for us to offboard the employees through Outpost so that you can onboard them direct under your new entity. As I mentioned, uh, we help um, with the employment agreement. So again, that's something that we manage and take care of. We ensure that they're set up on their payroll and that it's in compliance with the local labor and employment law. We're reducing that regulatory risk for you. And we also have the ability to provide um, employee with health benefits in various countries around the world. In addition to that, much like WeTAC, um, again, you can tap into the additional services that we have through partners like BDC and EDC, Trade Commissioner Service. I'm sure you get a lot of that support already with WeTAC. Uh, and then you can also tap into our human resources accounting and any legal support to help, again, manage those compliance risks. These are just a few of the clients that um, use the Outpost service. So most are tech on here, um, but again, it's just a snapshot of a few of the clients. I don't know if anybody recognizes some of the names, but um, these are mostly Waterloo, um, Toronto focused. The employer of record service, so Community Tech Outpost is direct in the US and the UK. So what that means is that we have an, a legal entity set up in both those countries. Everywhere else in the world where we're able to hire we actually have a partnership with Deal. Um, so Deal is the legal entity in the other countries that we do support. Uh, what we've done is negotiated a preferential price with Deal. For companies that come through Outpost, we can secure preferential pricing for you. Then if you were to go to, go to Deal Direct, we also have the ability to access the easy digital platform that Deal has, as well as any of their mobility and visa services for select countries in the event that you've secured a candidate in Belgium, uh, but they're not a Belgian citizen, so they will need to go through the visa process in order to have the right to work in that country. Uh, and then the partnership also allows for us to provide benefit plans in the countries that we're also able to hire in. These are a few use cases for an employer of record service. So a lot of companies get creative as to why they would want to use an EOR or an employer of record. So obviously the first one is to be able to hire remote talent and expand and scale your own business development in foreign markets. 
Sales is typically the first role that a lot of companies hire for as you're expanding into new markets. So in order to secure, you know, that very first salesperson in Australia or Belgium or wherever that might be, um, and for them to remain in that country, that's obviously the number one use case. Uh, what we've also seen are companies that will dabble in a market through a contractor, but then that contractor turns into more of a full-time employment and isn't really a contractor anymore. So we'll help with the transition from contractor status to full-time. The other um, is to be able to hire and secure a candidate while you're working to establish a legal entity. So let's say your company decides, yes, we want to go down the path of establishing a legal entity, but we've got this candidate that we want to hire today and not wait till the legal entity is in place, which can take anywhere from six to 12 months in some countries. So they use us as a bit of a stopgap to say, okay, let's hire the candidate today so we don't lose them. And in parallel, we'll work on establishing our legal entity. And when the time comes to you know, hire them direct under that new legal entity will work obviously very closely with you to ensure that that offboarding process is very smooth and seamless. We've also seen companies hire um, candidates using this EOR service until their immigration process is finalized to bring the candidate to Canada. So again, a lot of times companies will maybe want to bring the candidate to Canada, but again, the immigration process can be time consuming and you want to be able to secure that candidate today rather than, you know, six months from now until they get their visa uh, to be able to move to Canada. So again, companies will use us as that stopgap until their visa is approved to officially move to Canada and be able to work here. And then the other use case we see is um, more of a strategy to retain talent that they already have. So we've had a couple of companies, um, you know, come to us to say, we've got these really great employees and they want to move and, you know, work and live out of another country for a year. How do we legally hire them in a foreign country and still manage to pay them in obviously that local currency and ensure that all of the proper tax remittances are done specific to the country they want to move to. So again, we'll work with the companies to make sure that they are offboarded from the Canadian entity and then we'll hire them um, direct in whatever country they land in and can oftentimes help with the visa process along the way. So those are just a couple of use cases that um, we've seen over the last three years with companies that we do work with on this service. Um, certainly happy to answer any questions if anyone has anything specific of you know a market that you're looking to expand into and um, go from there. This next slide, uh, we like to show just because it gives a breakdown on you can certainly set up your own legal entity and do it yourself. And like I said, it can take anywhere from six to 12 months. It really depends on the country that you're looking to um, create that legal entity in. But just to give you a sense of what um, costs are associated in creating that legal entity, on average, about $80,000. Um, and again, like I said, financially, it will make sense at some point once you reach a threshold of about 10 employees in a country, that's when you'd want to think about, okay, now we should really have our own legal entity and be doing it ourselves as opposed to using an EOR service. Using the EOR service, you can see our costs are broken down there on the right-hand side. So the US and the UK are priced out differently than the rest of the world. Um, so we're direct, like I said, in the US and the UK, and then the rest of the world, we do partner with deal. Um, and you can see that there's no initial onboarding or setup fee um, in countries outside of the US or the UK. Next up, I just got a quick video um, that showcases a couple of founders um, that use the service and it just explains why they use the service and how they've been able to kind of scale and grow um, internationally through this EOR program. The pandemic hit the world and all of a sudden talent pool is across North America. We trust Communitech because they've been supporting Canadian companies in their growth of technology for so long. As we grow, we'll be expanding internationally, especially Europe, and we'll be looking to outpost to help us. Your focus should really be on tech and growing the business rather than the administrative part of onboarding new team members. It really makes the hiring process faster and takes the stress out of it by making sure that we're one legally compliant. Um, 
Um, the, in addition to a lot of the challenges that we heard from companies when we initially launched, I would say outposts was, you know, it, it generated a lot of other uh, questions and, and comments about, well, now that we've got these folks all over the world in various countries, and oftentimes it may be a team leader in Canada that's leading now an international team, how do they hire and manage those remote teams? So Communitech launched a series of programs under our Hive um, program, which really uh, gives, I would say, leaders the opportunity to expand their skill sets when managing a, a, a remote team globally and um, the various you know, nuances that that brings. Obviously, there's some cultural barriers and differences, time zones, um, lots of other things to kind of take into account as you're managing more of a dispersed remote team um, globally, not just dispersed in Canada, but all around the world. So there's a number of programs that we created in response to companies that were talking to us about challenges that they were having, in particular leaders voicing uh, concerns around how they would manage that remote workforce. So we offer a number of programs there as well to support on the skill development side of things. This will give you a sense of where we have coverage in countries around the world. So you'll see on here, some countries are listed with a March 2023 date. Some others are listed as TBD. Um, so again, as we work with Deal and they continue to build out their roadmap of where they can hire, um, certainly we keep this slide as a, as a live living document. We'll continue to update it. So we always like to say, you know, once you find talent, no matter where they are in the world, you shouldn't have a barrier to be able to hire them. So, you know, we want you to be able to hire for who they are, not where they are. And that's what the Outpost program, I would say, really has done over the last three years for companies is when they find and want to secure a really top-notch candidate, um, you know, to, to be able to make that whole process very easy, seamless, um, and, and reduce the amount of work on your side of things. So um, you can focus on scaling growth and we can focus on the back end. Um, and that's all I had for today. Um, I'll open it up to any questions, comments. Um, happy to, you know, if, if you pr would prefer to have an offline conversation, also happy to, to set something up offline with you as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. What a great program. And I love that you've created really an ecosystem um, around the program. It isn't just about hiring folks um, around the globe, but it's also supplying leaders with the skills that they need to manage these really sort of highly dynamic teams as well. Um, that's awesome. And I, I've got, to, I have made some notes of clients that I think will be a perfect fit uh, to introduce you to as well that are, that are looking to sort of strengthen themselves in this space. That's great. Awesome. So it doesn't look like we've got any questions and um, we'll put information in, in the uh, chat to get connected with the Outpost program um, if you want to take those conversations offline. Before we say goodbye, though, we do have a few important announcements to make. Um, registration is now open for our next Tech Connect Thursday on March 2nd at 12 p.m. It's going to be a conversation with the Computer Technology Industry Association or CompTIA. Uh, CompTIA is an American nonprofit trade association that issues professional certifications for the information technology industry and is considered one of IT industry's top trade associations. We're very excited about having our conversation with them. That is again coming up on March 2nd. To keep you engaged in the regional tech community, we've compiled a list of up and coming events in Windsor, Essex, tech and beyond. Um, coming up is the Future of Mobility Challenge, which will have two in-person events. These events will provide networking opportunities and are free to students registered for the uh, Future Mobility, Mobility Challenge. We'll throw a link to that inside the chat as well as the 5G Connectivity for Border Crossing Challenge, um, which, uh, which happens on February 15th. Also a big notification to save the date for Tech Week YQG returning to uh, We Tech Alliance in March, uh, the week of March 20th to the 24th. Um, there is an event every single day. There's lots of activities going on um, and every day has a different theme. So please check that out. Um, we'll send a link in the, the chat for that as well. Um, or you can head to www.wetech-alliance.com slash techweekyqg to find out more information. And finally, if you'd like more information on the Outpost program as discussed today, please head over to communitech.ca slash outpost for more ways to connect. This concludes our Tech Connect Thursday. Thank you all so much for attending. We hope you've learned and enjoyed today's session. A huge thank you to our team, John Mark Bashan, who is on the back end, making sure that everything today went smoothly. And of course, Karen, thank you to you as well for spending some time with us. 
and exploring this program uh, with our community. We really appreciate it. And we, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Adam. Great to, great to participate today and uh, always happy to help. Wonderful. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.